I'm Christy and this is Roughing at Homestead. Today I'm going to talk about water on the off-grid homestead. I'm going to leave a full list of resources and references in the description box below. I'm not sponsored by any product that I'm going to mention today. I'm just sharing my research and uh, experience with all of you. A couple weeks ago my spouse and I moved from the city to our off-grid homestead in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. We don't have any source of potable water, any electricity, and very limited propane, um, and we have no ability to have the propane tank filled uh, during this time of year. Our cabin is very secluded. Um, we're two miles from a road, uh, and there are definitely going to be times during the year uh, due to different weather conditions where we might not be able to leave the cabin. Um, so we needed to think ahead how to have safe water available to us for drinking, eating, cooking, cleaning, um, anything that we might need, as well as how will we handle uh, adding livestock to our homestead as we go forward. At this time, we cannot have a well drilled. Um, it's the middle of winter. Uh, and there is a long bureaucratic process to get on the proper waiting lists. So that is something that we are going to pursue down the road. But over the next several months, while we are waiting out the winter, uh, we had to have some stopgap solutions. So one of the first things we thought of was five gallon jugs of water. Um, you can usually acquire these at different um, grocery stores or uh, services like Culligan. We Googled our area that we were moving to and looked for different um, providers for these five gallon jugs. These range in price from about $5 to $10 for each jug. And then there's usually a deposit on the jug itself. Um, some companies will deliver these uh, because of our location and our distance from a road. Uh, this was not uh, a possibility for us. We also purchased a crock, which allows us to access the water in the jug. Um, this is not something that we had considered really, uh, so it was really awesome of a friend of, of mine to suggest that we needed a crock and that they happened to have a crock that we could purchase from them. Um, another thing that we considered is the weight and bulk of these jugs. They do weigh 45 pounds each, so when thinking about transporting or storing a lot of them at once, we had to consider the weight of them and the bulk of them. Um, and kind of spread that weight out over several trips or several spaces. Um, we also wanted to calculate how much water we would need. So we calculated based on one gallon per person per day. After living in the cabin and using this water exclusively for drinking and cooking for the past three weeks, this estimate has been pretty accurate. Uh, we go through about a gallon per person per day. Another way that we get water is boiling snow on the wood stove. Uh, this water is usually what we use for cleaning. So doing the dishes, um, doing laundry, cleaning ourselves, cleaning our, our environment. Um, it takes a long time, uh, especially if the snow is light and fluffy snow. Uh, but snow in the UP is abundant and clean. Um, and other than the labor that it takes for us to collect and melt the snow, it's free. We also brought with us to the cabin multiple different ways to purify and filter water. Um, these would be very useful in an emergency. So, uh, for example, weather occurs that precludes us from leaving the cabin. We run out of clean drinking water. Um, these are these these would be the fallbacks. Um, you still have to be careful what water source you're using when you use these products. Uh, you want to choose the smallest water source possible, so a creek over a river, um, for example, and you want to pull the water from as far upstream as you can. So the first product like this uh, that we have from um, our backpacking days is the Sawyer Mini. The Sawyer Mini is $20 and it will filter 100,000 gallons of water. Uh, it's definitely the most economical filter out on the market uh, and it does um, filter for particulates, bacteria, and protozoa. So E. coli, salmonella, cholera, 
giardia, all the major things that you would want not to be in your water. It does have to be back flushed um, and it is quite slow at filtering water, but it can be set up on a gravity feed um, so you can filter large quantities of water uh, without a lot of um, fuss or interaction with, with the system. Um, the next option that we have available to us is the Catadyme Be Free filter. Very similar filter. It's going to treat for the same exact um, particulates, bacteria, protozoa. It's $40 and can filter 264 gallons on one filter. Um, it's easier to clean. It just needs to be swished instead of back flushed. Um, it is harder to set up on a gravity system, uh, although I have seen it done. And it is a lot faster at filtering water. Um, it comes with its own little water bottle, so this is really nice for an individual to use, for one person to use. The last option that we brought with us that we have available is the germicidal tablets. These are $15 for a, two, for a twin pack of bottles, and that will um, treat 12.5 gallons of water. So these don't filter the water, they won't remove nature from the water, but they will treat for bacteria and protozoa. Um, they do tend to leave an iodine type taste in the water. Um, these I keep as like an emergency backup. I keep them in a bag near the door and this is the bag we would grab if there was some kind of emergency that forced us to leave the cabin. Like for example if there was a fire or uh, some other thing that we could no longer stay in the cabin we had to vacate. Um, another option available to us here in the cabin um, that is a bit different. Uh, I purchased a zero water uh, water pitcher. This pitcher is $40. Um, I purchased this after watching a YouTube video from Project Farm. Uh, I will put a link in the description below. So this is not rated to remove bacteria or protozoa, but it will filter out dissolved solids um, and a lot of things that the other filters are not going to filter out, like heavy metals and microplastics. Um, so once you have uh, water that is free from bacteria and protozoa, uh, it's, it would be really great to run it through this if your water had really sulfury smell um, or high iron, a lot of things that well water is well known to have. Um, and so that's why I purchased this as well. So now that we have actually moved to the cabin and we've had some time to explore the land, we might have a well. So more on that soon. Uh, we're exploring some options and we'll be sure to post a video about that as well. So what are your go-to options for filtering and purifying water? Tips and tricks that others might have? Leave those comments below. Thanks for joining me.